All right, we'll take a little bit of the cliff to way. <laughs> That's fun. Welcome to Motos, Cades, and Coffee. Good afternoon, guys. Andy from Motos, Cades, and Coffee. I got a special day today. Today I'm taking my bike, Max, out to get dynoed. I'm taking my bike to MRP Motorsports in Pasadena, Maryland. They have a chassis dyno, dyno, dyno. And I'm gonna see what the modifications that I did to my bike, which I'll talk about, and I'll put in other videos, um, putting links here for you. Uh, see how much horsepower it has. Uh, stock, they come a little over 24, I think 24.7 horsepower. I talked to Hitchcock's motorcycles, uh, and they said that it's about comes about 19 horsepower stock on a chassis dyno. That's at the rear wheel. So if I can get 29 horsepower at the rear wheel, I'll be really excited. That means I got about 10 horsepower increase. That's right, a 10 horsepower increase. If I get that, I'll be pretty happy. So 29 horsepower at the rear should be uh, equivalent to maybe 34 horsepower. So if I get 27, that's probably more accurate of where I'll be. Um, I have a 462 big board kit. I have a performance camshaft and a Powertronics ECU and an open air element air filter, a new inlet. So all together, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get 29 horsepower at the rear wheel. Before you watch the rest of this video, drop a comment in the description of what you think the horsepower will be. If you get it right, maybe you get a surprise. So maybe I'll start a contest and we'll see what happens. So let's go over the bike really quickly and then I'll show you uh, what I'm bringing to get the dyno done. There's Max, my 2019 Himalayan. Uh, rear fact, it is a 2019 without ABS. The very few models did that. Uh, you can't tell it really has a big board kit, but I do have some other modifications that you can see. So there's some oil I'm bringing, Powertronics ECU, oil filter. Oh, I also broke the motorcycle in. I have 300 miles since I've done it. I didn't rev it above 4,000 RPM. And um, now that it has over 300 miles, I'm gonna get the oil changed and we'll go ahead and see where the power lies. And then I'll be able to give a full ride review. What I can tell you right now, with the modification I have, it is changing character, characteristics of the motorcycle. It really is more of a higher RPM horsepower bike than low RPM. Low RPM maybe feels a little bit like stock or maybe even a little less than stock for torque and horsepower, but it really builds past 3,500 RPM. In fact, I don't even know where the where it's gonna max that out, but I'm gonna guess uh, 6,500 to 7,000 RPM will be the max horsepower numbers. I talked to the Hitchcock engineers. They said for the dyno run, we could probably bring it to 7,000 RPM for a few runs, but do not uh, make it a sustained 7,000 RPM motorcycle. Now, I also have a new front sprocket. It's one tooth more which gives me a better uh, drive ratio. It means it spreads the power out more and I get a higher top speed and a lower RPM for that top speed. Uh, as a stock bike, I wouldn't recommend that, but with the extra horsepower, sure, why not? You're gonna get better legs on the highway. Uh, I have 300 miles into it now and what I can safely say is at 55 miles per hour, I'm a little bit below 4,000 RPM consistently. Uh, 4,000 RPM brings me just a little bit above 55 miles an hour. All right, so that's what I got. That's what I'm bringing. There's a special cable in there. You can get the tuning software from Powertronics. It's free, and hopefully they tune it right. So let's uh, head on the way. Okay, so get on Max here. Oh, there you go, key on. When it's warm, I don't need the enrichener usually. Oh, there we go. Let it warm up a tiny bit. 
All right, there we go. That's all it needs. Now, um, it starts just fine. It doesn't. It uh, one thing I do notice though is oh, when I when I pull the clutch in very fast, sometimes it stalls out. So I'll have them take a look into that as well too. Um, that's a little bit new. Yeehaw. Yep, 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 yep. All right. All right, we'll take a little bit of a twisty way. So there's not much difference with the, um, with the bike when you just drive it normally. Not at all. Um, it's, it's really easy to drive. There might be a little more hesitation to stall out at, when you're just on the throttle and not on the clutch. There's a little bit more hesitation to stall out at really low speeds than, than stop. That is true. I, the kit recommends using high performance clutch springs. I did not do that. Maybe I should have. Um, it doesn't want to grab extremely tight and I might be slipping which prevents maybe some of the low end grab that this bike has available to it. So I might eventually want to go higher clutch springs. And keep in mind this bike is not dyno tuned at all. So we don't know um, if there's going to be a difference in the performance before and after the dyno tune. But at least we'll know the horsepower numbers. Um, you can leave it in fifth gear and I, like I said about 3500 rpm it really starts to come on and now that I got my braking miles I'm okay with uh, bringing the rpm up I can give you my impressions on high-speed driving a little bit <laughs> that's fun all right there's a little extra sporty nature to it and that's okay and you can see there it is I I, I, I pulled the clutch in and it killed it oh well uh, hopefully they can adjust that and they'll look to see what's causing it to do that in the dyno It is so easy to over rev in this with this with these mods. You gotta be really careful. Oh, one thing I will say: at keeping at 55 miles an hour, over 300 miles, I absolutely averaged 54 miles a gallon. Um, so before <laughs> I've gone 50 to 60 miles a gallon, I've averaged 44 miles a gallon. So I think what's happening is the performance mods really, there we go, it died again. The performance mods aren't causing the mile per gallon increase. What they, what is though is the, the uh, extra tooth sprocket. It drops the RPM and I'm dropping the RPM. I'm not using as much gas. And that's the horsepower it means I don't have to get into the rev range as much to get the speed that I'm going. So. That's why I think at higher, at normal cruising speeds, you're gonna get better miles a gallon with this kit. Um, all right, next one I go in here, I'll talk about vibration. There is a little bit different sound. I went with stock exhaust and I'll tell you why. I wanted to keep as much back pressure as I could and as quiet as I could. But I have some thoughts about that. The back pressure I wanted to keep for low and torque which kind of goes against what the high performance kit it offers with this, especially with this high RPM stuff. Um, and it's a little heavier. It's gonna be like seven pounds heavier than like aftermarket stuff that you're gonna get on there. So I could have lost weight by going to a different exhaust. 
and maybe if there was a different exhaust with the same amount of back pressure and just lighter weight and same same uh, RPM or same um, same sound decibel, I would get that. I kind of like the quietness of the stock exhaust compared to a uh, high, high performance exhaust. Alright, and I got my navigation apps going on. And there's my cruise control or my throttle lock. I'll put a description for or a link in the description for where that is. You can see I'm at a little over 55 miles an hour at 4,000 RPM. Or, and you know, uh, yeah. Sixty-five is about 4,200 RPM, right around there. 4,500 RPM is 65. It's a windy day out, totally. Sorry if it's bad audio. Alright. You know, I think with this higher uh, horsepower and different tooth sprocket, I'll be able to hit 100 miles an hour. What, 160 kilometers an hour, roughly a little less? I think I'll be able to hit it in this motorcycle. Uh, in my video where I just had um, the k and air filter and the and the performance computer, the power trunks, I was able to hit 82 miles an hour. Top speed. Uh, that should be no problem. So I'm gonna talk about vibration. It's a little bit bigger piston. I definitely feel a little bit more vibration, a little bit in the feet, foot pegs, and then a tiny, tiny bit more in the handlebars. Not horrible at all. But I think the counterweight is probably not sized for the piston. So that's probably why you're having a little more uh, vibration. Man, it's just pulling and it's, it's not a slow acceleration. It's getting up there quicker, much quicker. So that is an advantage. You see how I'm pulling right with the cars. It's not passing them, but it's not like a diesel acceleration. It gets up there in fifth gear. Keep it right up. And it's still pulling. I can still start to get higher and higher. So I grew up in Pasadena, Maryland. Well, I've lived here for the last 12 plus years. And I didn't know there was a dyno super close to me. MRP Motorsports. I found them um, online through some of the chat groups and I'm really excited to uh, to see what happens. Uh, yeah, so uh, they're really close, about 10 minutes from my house and I'm going to try and be there for Dino Day. Today I'm just dropping off. So this will be part one of the video. By the way, I put a new front disc brake on here. I don't like it as much. <laughs> it's funny. Um, everyone complains about the stock brake, front brake on the, on the Royal Enfield Himalayan feels like wooden and below average. On my 2019, um, I had stock pads, stock rotor, and man, it, it stopped better than average. I really liked it from the get-go. But I used it so much and with a lot of weight that after about 10, 11,000 miles, like it, it started vibrating and pulsating and I needed a new rotor. So I bought a takeoff rotor with like 200 miles on there. I put it on and what a difference it made. It is <laughs> much more wooden. It still stops fine, but it stops like every other Himalayan I've been on, which is a lot less. Um, stopping force than the one that I originally had on this motorcycle. I don't know why. Oh well. Maybe if I get different pads it will it will stop better. But it stops fine as is. I think the rotor was like 80 bucks shipped so 
That was fine with me. I think the person that is going to be doing the dyno, his name is Kenny. He's been there a while. Hopefully uh, he doesn't mind getting interviewed and talked to because I'd really like to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about it. Again, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna do this. Give me what you think the dyno numbers are, but you gotta promise. You have to be subscribed, and you gotta promise to put the dyno numbers before you watch the full video. Um, and the dyno numbers will reveal in the in the, in the after video. So you have to watch it uh, sometime between this video and part two, or actually get the dyno numbers. You have to drop it in this one. Um, and then the winner that gets closest, or if there's a tie or something, I'll, I'll hold a raffle or a contest, and you're gonna get some cool Moto's Cades and coffee swag. Maybe some coffee, maybe some t-shirts, maybe some buttons, maybe some stickers. I don't know, maybe all of the above. It's up to you. Guess right. And I want rear wheel horsepower numbers, not corrected numbers that's what I'll take I'll take rear wheel horsepower numbers and the one hint I will give you is that uh, stock these come about 19 horsepower is what dino jet dinos show all right so we are almost there do 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 all right here we are we are not going to Bahama Mike's. I've been there. Sorry, guys, I can't recommend them. All right. Here we are. We'll go talk to them. All right. Shut off and we'll see if we can get uh, some time. Doop, doop, doop.